makes basically do you feel like it possibly could be the media's fault as to why guys don't go hard in the all-star game like when you really think about it it's like when you talk when you look on like sports uh talk shows just the media just everyone in general the discourse around it's mainly like players mainly like superstar players it's really like what do you do in the playoffs did you ha- do you have a ring nothing else ma- like your awards don't matter it's like people get on and be where it's like he got an mvp deserve it or not but it's like he didn't do nothing in the playoffs it's like when you hear people talk about like shea People try to give Shea like the credit that he rightfully deserves, like great young player, averaging 30, mm-hmm. going crazy. When you go on like Twitter or something, it's like, what has he done in the playoffs? He hasn't even made the playoffs yet. It's like that I don't that shouldn't stop me from giving this guy credit. So it's right. like a lot of NBA discourse is so much, it's like, what do you do in the playoffs? Do you have a win or a ring? Do you did you win that like nothing else matters? So the players is like, all right, cool. If nothing else matters, it's like, why am I going so hard in the all-star game? Like, cause you're not gonna give me no credit if I go out there and, and win All Star MVP. Like, you're not gonna give me no sort of credit. Honestly, you'll probably use right. it against me. It's like, oh, you're going hard in the All Star game, but what'd you do in the playoffs? Like, you'll probably use it against me. So, yeah, I don't know if that's kind of not part of it, but it maybe ties into it a little bit. I don't know. I was just curious to hear your thoughts on it. No, nah, it definitely does, and like that actually is like a perfect segue into like what I want to talk about next, which was what JJ Reddick kind of said on first take. But just like where the NBA fan ecosystem sits right now is like it's bottom feeding. Like it's it's bad. It's like you mm-hmm. really have to you gotta understand the narratives that begin pushed by the media as a whole. So like what JJ Reddick said on first take. Now I want to address Stephen A's point. Since when is it? players jobs to educate people on basketball when did that become a thing when did that become a thing isn't that our job isn't that our job i'll answer i, I I'll do answer that as my I'm, job I'm, that's I'm, my job I'm, to educate I'm, people I'm on letting, basketball i'm letting you speak and no, then I, i'll I'm, answer I, i'm it's our job Stephen a to educate mm-hmm. people on basketball it's okay. our job and here's the reality this is the okay. ecosystem we live in i can do a okay. video on my podcast i can do a video on my podcast where I break down the last nine games the Pelicans have used Zion Williamson as the primary ball handler and what type of actions that has led to. I looked it up this morning. 54,000 views on YouTube. But I want to call out a coach yesterday. Oh, that gets tens of millions of engagements. That's the ecosystem we live in. So do fans actually want to be educated or not? Mm -hmm. Do they? Mm -hmm. Like, This is the current state of how media is. And like, you can't really fault it because it's a two way street. Like, the media pushes it because that's what the fans are consuming. Like, they are into the drama. And like, that drama stems back into the legacy debates that you always hear, or always having to move goalposts for guys, or always talking about rings or playoff success. Like, not being able to, like you said, how are we going to go at Shea? For lack of playoff success, when could he have made the playoffs before this year? <laughs> right. <laughs> what are we like? What are we talking about? That's just being intentionally, like, like you're missing the whole point of, like, you're. It's not even like you're talking about basketball at this point. You're literally just talking about rings. You're just talking about. That's really it. But like, you're not appreciating the sport, the players, like the actual nuances of the game that people do night in, night out. And that's okay if you don't – I'm not saying that you've got to be into the X's and O's like crazy to enjoy the game of basketball, but I also think you are doing a disservice to yourself as a fan and vice versa if, as the media to the fans if that is so much of what you're focused on is just legacy debates. What is this guy's rings – you know, how does he hold up? How does his resume hold up all time? Who's the greatest point guard of all? Like, those kinds of conversations 24-7, like, it's just noise, bro. It's just noise. Yeah, 100%. It's just, that's just, I mean, that's just where it's at right now, you know, as far as, like, what people want to talk about or listen to. Like I said, a lot of people, <clears throat> yeah, I'm not, like, NBA fans aren't real basketball fans. NBA fans are NBA fans because they like the, drama that comes with it they like the extra stuff that comes with it they don't actually like 
basketball. You know what I mean? They just always right. like said, the legacy talk, the debates, the drama, everything, everything that comes with it. They don't actually like the X's and O's part of it. Like I said, which is fine because there's definitely more casual fans than there right. are, you know, like super like X's and O's guys. But I feel like there has to be a way that the casual fan could just watch it without making everything about rings and debates and things like that. Like just sit back and enjoy the game. Just just watch basketball. It's really not that hard, but it's tough because that's kind of like you said, it, it goes both ways because it's like that's what they sh- get shown. That's also what you consume. So it's like, how do you even fix that? You know, so, yeah, I agree. Right. It's, it's just it's tough because there's no real way to fix it. I feel like. It's crazy because like what you just said, if somebody came out and was just like a casual fan, they were like, dang, bro, Shea's really nice. Like he's really been hooping this year. Somebody's genuine response to that could be. I mean, I guess, but he ain't really done nothing in the playoffs, so. Like, that you didn't – those two things shouldn't even go back to back. Nothing the first guy said had anything to do about the playoffs. And Literally then, just was talking about his play in the season this year where the playoffs haven't started yet. And like that, and that's the thing when it comes to guys winning awards and you use it against them. It's like if Shea makes first-team All-NBA, they'll be like, oh, yeah, two first-team All-NBAs with what, – what has he done in the playoffs to deserve that? He shouldn't get that yet. Until he's done something in the playoffs, it's like, why? That's a regular season award. What does that have to do with that's anything? A, that's in the an individual award, and you're right. talking about team success. Those are two different things, bro. Dude shouldn't make the All Star game. Look at his look at his team's record. I don't, bro. What is he's playing well himself? That has no, the All Star game is not not about who has the best record, bro. That's not what it's about. It's about who's playing the best individually. So it's like that's what I mean when got when it's like they'll use an award or like something you did well at, against you in a weird way. Like that, it, that's not how it should be. Instead of talking you up, they'll use it to like tear you down. Like instead of saying like, all right, you got all these all NBAs, all all stars, but with no rings, it's not like, Hey, he, he doesn't, it should be like, Oh yeah, he doesn't have a ring, but it's like, he made all NBA. He's an all star. Like he's a really good player. They don't do it in that aspect. They use your accolades and awards that you made to kind of tear you down. And that's not how it should be. Shouldn't be like that at all. But like I said, that's really, really where it is. And not even just for basketball. It's like sports media has been going that direction. And like I said, it's it's entertaining. You see the clips from first take. I laugh at them. I watch them from time to time. Like I'll throw it on in the background for background noise when I'm doing work or something. Like I get it. But there are people who that is literally their whole mindset on how they view not just sports, but like specifically basketball, it's through the lenses of those types of debates, nonstop, 24-7. And, it's, and again, yeah. that go, all right, they go back to the two-way street. They view it that way because that's what's always being pushed out. And it's like vice versa. It's a constant cycle, bro. Yeah. 